You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you've been told you may need a spine, a spinal fusion. And we're talking about a new minimally invasive technique that uh, literally less than 3% of all uh, neurosurgeons, spine surgeons, orthopedic spine surgeons know how to do. He's one of less than uh, 25 guys uh, or less than 30 guys that are even doing and performing this procedure. With us, we have an expert on this topic. He is a neurosurgeon, Dr. Hamid Abbasi. Dr. Abbasi, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Was I uh, okay on the, th that introduction? I mean, you are less than 30 guys doing this minimally invasive procedure? Yes, actually, unfortunately you are, and I'm saying that unfortunately because I see what effect this have on patient's life and what surgery or we spine surgeon are performing at this point. Okay. And so there, there are only very few that are performing the surgery this way. Okay, now people need to know, I'm not endorsing you today, I'm mm -hmm. just asking the questions, but I went to your website. Yes. You have well over 100 patients on there that had this surgery. They're saying things like, I was able to walk the first day, <laughs> I was back to work, I'm back to golf, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with my kids, my grandkids. You have uh, thousands of patients. It seems like almost an exaggeration when I look at <laughs> these, uh, these videos. So uh, you have a lot of these videos. So let's first talk about, because we're talking about a new mm -hmm. minimally invasive way for people that need a fusion. They mm -hmm. failed physical therapy, they've tried injection therapy, mm -hmm. lots of medications, now it's time for a fusion. But there's two types of fusions and that you say people need to know about. Mm -hmm. So let's start with what are the problems this minimally invasive OLIF procedure can fix? Mm -hmm. and, and then I wanna ask you a little bit about how, how, how you do it. First, Andy, I, I agree with you. It's almost too good to be true. And that is why I put thousands of testimonials out there because it's always easy to put one good result out there. But the result has been so overwhelming that uh, I have decided to put enough patients view on this procedure, people who regain their lives. Okay. And, and I think your, uh, if I understand your question right, is about uh, who is really needing this procedure. Okay. I, I think- Like what uh, kind of back problems are we talking about? Yeah. And you know, the, the, I think everybody in his own family knows somebody who cannot walk because of the pain, who cannot stand because of pain. Somebody who cannot go to Costco and uh, go through a, a shopping uh, mall without leaning on the, the cart or somebody who after uh, the five minutes playing with their children they are, have to just sit back and recluse themselves from their family. This is a common problem as a matter of fact if you are 60 years old and uh, you are among 95 percent of the people who have to struggle with their spine problem and if you are 70 the number of the people who never have the spine problem is goes down to one to two percent. So everybody in their family, they know somebody says, yes, that is the problem I have to deal with. And these people have problem of the disc, problem of the spine itself. They have uh, the bending of the spine to the wrong direction, which we call scoliosis. They have the material of the disc instead of separating the bone, pushing on the nerve, which we call uh, disc herniation or they have problem of other joint in that area that uh, make the, any kind of motion excruciating. Okay, now there's over a million spine surgeries, you say, performed every year. At the, according to the, the, uh, all the available data, more than a million spine surgeries are, uh, surgeries are performed in the United States, and uh, half of them uh, are fusions, meaning where there is a bad motion, we know the motion is the problem, and we are trying to eliminate so the bone doesn't grind the bone. Okay, now you say this is life-changing for people. That means they get this minimally invasive surgery that in some cases, 33 minutes as opposed to five hours, you go in through tiny incisions, looking at it through a scope, I guess fluoroscopy, and you're able to do what before, you have to open up the whole back, cut through the stomach or the side, detach the muscles, Yes. You're able to do with small incisions. So what's the, and, and you say the downtime is very low, because but it can be life changing. Yes, and you know, I saw yesterday one of my post-op patient three weeks after the surgery, this patient has been in pain for a year. This patient could not even walk. He's an avid golfer. It, his life is about golfing and his wife is telling me, this is not the same person okay. that I married 30 years ago. And now he's th three weeks out of the surgery. The pain is gone. The wife says, 
I regained my husband back and patient is now asking me about when he can go to the uh, golf course and start golfing again whereas he was told after open surgery it's going to take him at least a year, a year and a half before he can be there where he wants to be. I had another patient that, okay. you know, a, a nurse that uh, has been on narcotic for years and she couldn't practice that profession that she loved and now just three weeks after the surgery, that is a story, and I have on that patient testimonials four weeks after the surgery, half a year after the surgery, a year after the surgery, that we gave that person uh, her life back within weeks, not as open surgery So she's surgery off the does, medications? Within two weeks after the surgery. Okay. And that is, a, that is a theme that we see. By us damaging the tissue so much less, we reduce the amount of the narcotic uh, people require. The pa another patient from yesterday, we did a multi-level fusion. Patient is just taking Tylenol. This is unheard of after a spine So surgeries. even if you have to put, because I, I guess with fusion surgery, you have to put in things made of like ta titanium, titanium, things like yes. that. You can do that through small incisions? And we, that is the technology that allows us to do that. And most of the time it's not about that titanium screws and rods and spacers that we put in, it's about the path we take to put that material in. That is the most of the damage is done by us getting there, not by putting the devices in. And we are able to put those devices in through okay. a portal that is barely thicker than the pen you are holding in your hand. So this is a tech, uh, like a, a, a technique difference. Yes. Typical neurosurgeons, spine surgeons, orthopedic spine surgeons, they are going in opening up the back, like filleting the back as you say, you have to detach the muscles off, uh, going in through the abdomen or through the oblique, and so you could see what you're doing. Yes. Put in the hardware, close them back up, and then the person starts off with a walker, then a cane, and then after eight it weeks, months. 12 weeks, six months, they could go back to work. You're saying that same type of fusion, you could put through a small incision, the size of the pen you just said, and go in and do the same thing, Mm -hmm. And and you know, let me with less you, blood loss, low downtime, and they're walking the same day. The ninety six percent of my patient walk within the first twenty four hours. So you kind of have surgery. a walking around in the in the hospital. Yes, yes. Or in and your outpatient uh, facility. Well, the, the many of my patients actually go home same day. They walk four hours after the surgery and go home. Many of my patients um, are able independently to um, uh, walk within the first 24 hours, that's why they can go home. And many of the things we do is based on us being able to walk. Like, if you cannot walk, you cannot go and prepare a meal for yourself. So that is a pre-requirement for the patient to be independent. And by us being able to get the job done without damaging all the muscles around the spine, we are able to put them back on their lives much okay. faster. Now, you're a pioneer in this. I mean, you're, you're one of the key thought leaders in the world, one of uh, I guess less than 30 guys in the country performing this on a regular basis. That's correct. And you have a teaching facility, a campus, 130,000 square foot campus where you teach medical doctors, surgeons from all over the world how to do this. Um, Does it cost more to go to a guy like you? Because I <laughs> no, know all no, of your doesn't. team, you said it's your it team, you have a bunch of guys yes, that know how to do yes. this. Um, you see, the, the, our training never stops after the residency. Unfortunately, for some surgeon, it does. Okay. But for us, we understand that the, the training after the residency becomes more difficult. You get busy. You have to take time off. And um, it doesn't cost uh, more for the patient. So Because it's insurance. Get, Everything yeah. we're talking about insurance and covers. And surgeons don't get paid more by doing in such an advanced kind of uh, the, uh, procedure. So the, we ha you have all the incentive to just stick to what you are doing, but, and maybe sometimes go to a weekend course, learn something, come back and practice it. But this technology is so advanced, so much different to anything that's out there. A weekend course in a cadaver lab is not enough. And so the outcomes are great. I mean, you take people once, with bulging disc, herniated disc, bone on bone, severe scoliosis, yeah. that, that fusion, the only way is an open procedure fusion, major surgery, you can go through a tiny Randy, incision. I would tell you that- You do this every day, every yes. once a month? No, we do, it, uh, we do it every week. We do it very, we, we perform the surgery all the time. And uh, I can tell you that if you, uh, if the surgeon learns it the right way, meaning uh, not through a weekend course, but what we call the soft transition in the inspired spine, meaning 
going little by little, pairing experienced surgeon with a less experienced surgeon, the results are overwhelming comparing to what's out there. We are talking about people who have been told that um, you will die of the surgery that you need on your spine. Yeah, because if you're 80 years old, 75 yeah. years old, and you're on many pain medications, isn't it too dangerous to do a fusion surgery? Open surgery? Definitely not our surgery because we are able to do that 10 hour surgery in under two hours or one and a half hour. We are able to do the surgery that the open surgery would uh, uh, cost you half a gallon of blood with less than an ounce of blood. What's your oldest patient you've done this on? <laughs> 93 years old. So a 93 year old was able to get fused Yes. With this procedure? Yes. And what was their outcome like? Um, that patient went home the three days after the surgery, and that patient did well. Um, uh, that was five years ago. Unfortunately, that patient passed away on unrelated issue five years later, but he gained five good years. Of no pain. Of no pain. And you know, it is bad, it is difficult to be old, but it's miserable to be old and in pain. And then that changed not only your life, that changed the life of your entire family. Okay, so I understand this. So as a neurosurgeon, you know, and we talked that, I always thought that neurosurgeon was just the brain, yeah. but it's actually the nerves in the spine and throughout the yes. body. But what you're doing as a neuro neurosurgeon is you're moving the pressure away from these nerves. We're removing the damage or damaging okay. tissue away from the nerves. That's yeah, and by the way, you must as a doctor, I'm sorry to interrupt, but as a doctor, the patient comes in frustrated. And yes. they're saying, but I was told the only way, because of my age, because mm -hmm. of my problem, because of the bone on bone or whatever, the, because of the lack of disc, I need an open, a major spine surgery. Yes. And you're saying you could do it minimally invasive. Do they ever doubt you? Do they ever say, are you sure you can do this? <laughs> yes, all the time, for a good reason. They go to a figure of authorities, surgeon, spine surgeon, neurosurgeon, and they're being told they're too old, uh, the problem is too bad, they're going to bleed on the table and uh, that the problem is not solvable. And okay. when they come to me, and uh, many of them uh, actually at first, they look at me like, are you sure you can help me? Okay. But as well, you know, they have a side, they t shake my hand and truly you see in their eyes that finally the hope, a, a door opened for them, okay. that they don't have to live like that. Like a, an um, elderly lady who was telling me, doctor, if I die, I die. I cannot live like that. I said, She couldn't live second. in pain. She couldn't live in the pain she was in? That, and and okay. she was being told that the surgery that she would need would kill her because that would have been an open surgery, 12-hour surgery, a, almost a gallon of blood loss. We did that surgery in less than uh, one and a half hour and patient went uh, the, 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 the home two days after the surgery because we didn't have to go through the traditional way of doing the surgery. And my answer many times to my patient is, if you take your airplane to a car mechanic who has never learned to do airplane mechanic, is going to tell you it's too dangerous, we cannot do that, you don't need that. And these are things that my patients are told. You have to take your problem to somebody who's trained to do that. And that number of people who are trained to deal with this kind of problem in this gentle way is so little that that's why we decided. I mean, less to, than 30 guys in the world. That is that is not enough. This. That is not enough, and that is why the our drive com, comes to produce a center to train the people because we see what kind of difference it does make in people's life. So, if you have a spine surgeon that you're going to, orthopedic mm -hmm. spine surgeon, uh, neurosurgeon. If they're over the age of 40, they did not get this training, this minimally invasive training in their medical school training. As a matter of Is fact, that true? As a matter of fact, no surgeon has ever gotten this training in the residency because this procedure is new. The okay. technique is new, the technology is new. But you've done hundreds of these procedures? We, uh, we have done in our group more than 1,000 of okay. these kind of procedures. And we have done like over uh, 2,800 levels. Some of the patients need more than one level. So we have done tremendous number of these and we have published um, you publish? seven peer-reviewed papers that shows the efficacy, the safety. Is better than well, the traditional spine in, uh, fusion surgery? And the surgery? results are overwhelming. The results are overwhelming. Uh, there is a healthy skepticism in medicine that I always uh, actually uh, welcome.
but uh, we see that the skepticism literally melts away when people with open mind honestly look at the data. Their skepticism actually melts away when they get involved. Most okay, of that okay. skepticism comes before they are um, looking at our data. Now you have offices all over Minnesota, right? Um, are there people suffering that don't have to be? Are there people on three, four pain meds that they're saying, I'm just not gonna get surgery. There's no way I'm gonna get surgery. Because they're scared of the surgery. And they, they don't know told. about this. Yes. So there are people in Minnesota that don't even know this exists. And if they knew how good it was or how easy it is, they would do it. Is that, your t is, is that your belief? I, I, I think there is a good understanding out there that many of the spine surgery doesn't work for the patient the way uh, people expecting them to, to remove their pain, put them back on their lives, make them go back golfing. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, people, if many people notice that after one spine surgery, then they have more spine problem. And I think all of that uh, melts down, condensates to the fact that the way we do regular surgeries with the technique that are 70 and 40 years old, cause more damage on the way of getting the job done. The collateral damage is many times way higher and the solution cause more problem than the, uh, it, on the way of getting the, the instrumentation so, in. So, so these muscles, I mean, they're traditional fusion surgery. Mm -hmm. You've helped me understand this. I mean, you're cutting and detaching muscles, cutting off the blood supply of those muscles and all the connective tissues. There's no way, I'm saying there's no way, you can correct me, <laughs> but it doesn't sound like they're really gonna be able to heal back properly. Yes. So you're gonna be limited even more with their movement in the future. Yes. Because See, I, I, there's one thing to be out of pain, but then there's another thing to be able to go back to golfing. Yes. And maybe tennis or jogging or whatever. Yeah. We heard about a major uh, golfer, a professional golfer recently that got many smaller surgery until he got the fusion surgery that he needed long time ago. Okay. And uh, it, took him practically many years off the golf course. We have- Was he done the open way? Well, he's done the open way now, but he was, before he got done a version of the open way, uh, he was off golf course for many, many years. Yeah. Because the understanding was doing that open surgery is so much damaging that no, let's uh, not do that. But now we can show that uh, you can get that surgery done and be back on the golf course within weeks or months rather than within years. So uh, what I believe about that uh, major golfer that we were talking about is that um, w w how we can show based on other thousand patients that we have done the surgery, he could have gone back and uh, won the major uh, tournaments three years before he did. He came back finally and he revived his career, but we could have put him back on his career two or three years and, sooner. And these are people that are in the know. They're exposed to the best of the best of the best. But since there's only like about 30 guys performing this consistently in the world, how does somebody even find a surgeon like you? Because you have, you have people that travel, right? They fly yes. to see you. Yes, um, all the time. And that's one of the reasons you're doing this program to let people know that yeah. this is available. Yeah, um, this, is, this is a, uh, the, it is not, um, the training of this kind of procedure doesn't exist. We put it together, now it does. The, the center to learn this in a constructive, in an organized way didn't exist. We put that together. Papers showing, peer-reviewed papers showing that this is effective, this is safe, didn't exist. We actually published those papers, scientific papers. Okay. When the patient so, comes in, most of them are referred to you. They could actually call you directly and, and start there. But what's the, how soon from you meeting the patient can you tell them, hey, we could do this fusion surgery minimally invasive? Depending on the level of the treatment they have received and the level of investigation is done within weeks. And uh, But you have to understand that many times um, our goal is try to help them with non-surgical means, meaning that this is a complex uh, kind of situation. We have put a, uh, a good group of chiropractors, physical therapists, interventionalists. So Inspire Spine, you have all this? Yes, okay, yes. Okay. And we, our goal is still not, even if they are being told by other surgeons they need a surgery, we are going to put a protocol to find out what is truly the best treatment for them. Okay. Many times that is non-surgery, but if it is a surgery, we should be able to 
identify the problem and qualify them for that surgery within weeks. Okay, now, you told me earlier mm. that people are coming in today more educated than ever because of the internet, right? Absolutely. Do people ever come in and they say, Doc, I need this minimally invasive surgery and you have to talk them out of it that these other methods are better? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, I see that in every clinic day I have, I meet a few patients that uh, they have been told by many different surgeons, many different kind of ways of treating their problem. They come to me, doctor, this is uh, what I want to get. This is why I'm here. And my answer to them is, um, we are going to put you through a protocol to find out what, what are the best options for you. And uh, within those good options for you, we will make you understand what is the advantage of one versus another. So we see our patients as our partners. And many times they are well educated, well okay. uh, researching their uh, situation. So, and that really help us to have a good communication uh, path to them to be able to make them understand what the problem is. You said, and we talked on the phone, that you want to make spine surgery, or at least a consult, like a trip to the dental office. Elaborate on that, what do you mean? Well, nobody likes to go to dentists, but right? we have to, but this is good for us. Um, on the other side, uh, the spine surgery has been so damaging, such a bad reputation, because the results are um, horrendous sometimes, that we are afraid of. People live in pains for years before okay. they dare to go and talk to a spine surgeon because what, of the, what, the, what they have been hearing about what the results are. I think what we are trying to do, we are trying to uh, make it opaque, uh, I'm sorry, make it, make it very clear to the patient, make, educate them what the options are out there, that uh, they don't have to get their back destroyed to get the job done, that they don't have to be off work for years or at least a year before they can go and do things that okay. they love to do. And uh, in, in a way, um, if you need spine surgery, we want to make it as gentle as possible. And we have all the technology, all the expertise to do that. And uh, as well, we have put tremendous effort of putting information out there uh, in a way that the patient, uh, that takes their anxiety away okay. from getting their spine treated. Now, if somebody needs a fusion, you used to do it the old, the other way? No. Open, so you never did it an open procedure? Well, I did. When you I, first started? No, in the residency, I started learning the surgery old fashioned way. And I remember the very first surgery of a spinal fusion for one level that I did with my attending, we were in the surgery for seven hours. We lost closer to uh, half a gallon of blood. And All because you have to separate everything to get a better view of the spine. And that is how, how we learn. And, they, and that's being done though every day for people just tuning in. I mean, this is absolutely. how it's normally done. You this open is how them up. normally done. The same way that, you know, when you go and get your gallbladder removed today, they make a small portal, but 10 years, 20 years ago, they would cut open your belly and uh, literally visualize all your organ just to get the gallbladder out. Now, the difference is in the, uh, abdominal in the belly surgery, there's a cavity. So the techniques to perform that surgery minimal invasively was developed easier. Okay. Technology in the spine surgery is lacking behind that because in the spine, there is no opening. There is no cavity inside that we can work with. So this endoscopic technique never really stabilized themselves in the spine. And um, on the other side, we know have all the technology and expertise needed to do, perform the surgery minimally invasive with, through a keyhole procedure, okay. through a tube that is barely bigger than your pen that you are holding in your hand. Now we are short on time, but 98% of all spine fusion surgeries, or more than 98%, which is almost all of them, are done with that big open way when they could be done minimally invasively. No, actually about 80 to 90% of okay. them are performed with the open old-fashioned surgery. About 10, 15% are performed what we call mini open. And minimal invasive is a broad name that many people use it even though if they do a mini open, they call it minimal invasive. But uh, I, I think you're true, uh, you're, uh, you're right about that. Less than two or 3% of the surgeries are performed the OLIF fashion, which is truly minimal invasive because uh, truly you're performing it through a tube that is barely bigger than the pen you're holding in your hand. Now, so the downtime 
first of all, it, studies, I mean, you have proof that it works just as good, if not better, less downtime, back to work faster, off the pain meds. Uh, within weeks rather than within years. The main thing is, is just educating the public that this is available. Yes. That's the challenge. Yes, and you know, I'm, I'm so happy that we live in the age of the information that the internet has uh, democratized the availability of the information. I like to mention a story about Barry Marshall. Okay, we got about a minute. Yeah, not many people know about him. He told that we don't have to cut your stomach open and cut half of your bowel to get rid of your gastric or duodenal ulcer. It took him 35, almost 25 to 35 years to prove that and show it to the medical community. And he fought a really uphill battle. Now, it was in 1970s and 80s, but it, after 25 years, he got the Nobel Prize because he made a okay. big surgery to a small procedure, kind of taking a pill and healing a situation. Now, with the internet and uh, the information available to everybody, I think the patients are our true beneficiary, and that is what we are trying to do. Get the information to the patient, the patient advocating for their disease okay. and for, for the healing process, for them to get the information and uh, asking their surgeon, what do they know about this procedure? Many times we notice that even uh, spine surgeon don't know about this kind of approach okay. and that is what we, we have to make that uh, that for this procedure not to take 30 years to become the most performed procedure many patients are going to benefit from that today we're out of time final message those people they've heard what you had to say they're in pain they're deathly afraid of surgery they don't want spine surgery what do you say to them go learn about your problem come have a consultation with us. We have internet consultation. You can have it from oh, okay. your own couch where we help you to set up a one-to-one -one, uh, with one of our doctors where we look at your films, know about your options, and know about what's available today. Okay, good. Get, wanna... in, get, get your life back. All right, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good thank stuff. Thank you very much, Andy. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Avers. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.